Now, in the space of just over a year, Wicklow woman Carol Ann Curley lost an incredible 13 stone. Carol Ann decided to turn her life around after being informed about the dire condition of her health on a visit to the family doctor. Motivated by her desire to change her life and to be around to watch her grandchildren grow up, Carol Ann dropped from a size 36 to a, a dress size 36 to a slender size. She's laughing now because she can't remember being that big. She is now a uni slimmer of the year finalist and she joins us now to share her inspirational weight loss story. Well, first of all, Caroline, you're welcome. Second Thank of all, so congratulations. What an achievement. Looking at you, I can't imagine you being that size and I'm sure people at home are thinking the same thing. So I'd love to call up the before pictures to show that you were. <laughs> A size 36, which is, there's you. Huge. You are unrecognisable to me in that picture. Mm -hmm. Do you recognise yourself when you look at that picture? I do. I remember how I felt in that picture. How did you feel? Miserable. Like I had no life. I had no life. It's not that I like I had no life. I had no life. You didn't go out so to the house. The only thing you went out to the house to do was to go to supermarket shopping. To go to the supermarket and then it would be parked as close to the door as I could and have a trolley to lean on because I couldn't walk around. When did weight become an issue for you? I mean, were you slim as a teenager? No, weight no. was always an issue okay. with me. Okay. But um, when did it get really serious? When I went to the doctor in 2013, when she told me that my kidneys were failing, when she told me that my cholesterol was so high that I was in a danger zone, when she told me that my blood pressure was sky high. Um, so my mother was 46 when she died of high cholesterol, heart attack. Did your mum also have a weight issue? No. She didn't? My okay. mother was so slim. So it was, it's a hereditary thing. But the doctor essentially told you you were killing but yourself. She, well, she did. My father was in a diabetic coma and um, had kidney failure for three weeks before he died. And when the doctor told me that, I brought it all back. I was thinking of my kids. And leaving them and my grandkids. So that gave you the most amazing motivation to lose weight, and you I did. I want to be here for them. Well, not only, a, lot of, it, a lot of people paid lip service, but you did it. I know what it feels like to be without a mum. So I do, and that's not nice. Had you not realised up until that point that you were endangering yourself so severely, or were you in denial, do you think? In denial. Yeah. You know, you know you're big, but you don't exactly realise how big. I mean, it's looking back on those pictures now, yes, I was that big. But even holding out that trousers, I'm, oh my God. You know, you're mortified even, even showing you, you're mortified showing people. Now I'm not because I'm happy I've done it. I've done it, I've added years to my life. Can we, can we show the trousers? Because I know you are happy to show this now because, so these trousers are size what? Size 36. Size 36. Do you want me to stand yeah, up? Yeah, stand up yeah. and show us. There they are. And hold them over. See, you could fit the three of us in there. <laughs> could. It's remarkable. So the doctor you, you said. Were saying, mm, sorry, mm. you were saying that you'd always had a weight issue, but were there there were there times when it kind of leaped from being okay, sort of you know, being slightly overweight to, to where you eventually ended up? Did, was there you gave up cigarettes, which didn't I help? I gave up cigarettes. Um, it's about eight and a half years ago. And, um, and was there a big jump in weight then? There was. That's when the most of it went up. Really? Yeah. Now, so. I, I noticed in the notes you said that you didn't, you, you weren't a bad eater, or you didn't eat bad food, you just ate too much. Just ate too much. I get up in the morning, I laugh now, I get up in the morning and I had four sons. They'd be going to school, college, work, whatever. And the first dad would get up and I'd have a cup of tea and a slice of toast with him. The second dad would get up, I'd have a cup of tea and a slice of toast with him. The third lad and the fourth lad. And they'd all be gone and then I'd say, have me breakfast now before I start the day. <laughs> You know, and it's just, it wasn't registering with me. I was eating, but it just wasn't registering. I was eating so much. And I go to the press and I'd be giving out, who oh, ate all the bloody bread? So you were in but serious like, denial. So this, wasn't, yeah. this wasn't actually comfort eating in a way. It was just, it just became part just, of your routine. It was habit. Because I was smoking cigarettes all the time, food was then my, my crutch. So you're told the chances of you being around for your children and your grandchildren weren't very good unless you changed mm -hmm. your life. So you did change your life. Now, it's, to be told that, was, I can see emotionally still how much that affected you that day. Mm -hmm. So when you left that doctor's surgery, what did you decide to do or how did you set about changing the weight? Because I know for so many viewers at home, they'll be like, God, I'd love to turn my life around. How did you seize upon that opportunity? Well, I cried the whole way home, trying to figure out what am I going to do? 
And um, when I got home, I got onto the computer and just put in slimming. And the first one that popped up was Unislim. And I had been in Unislim a few years ago and liked the programme. And um, I phoned a friend and bawled down the phone to her. Um, I didn't want to go on my own. Um, it was a step that I was very, very nervous of taking, extremely nervous, afraid. Um, afraid that the scales wouldn't hold me. There was so many fears there and she agreed with me that she would come with me. Thank God. And um, I'll never forget the first night I went in. Um, I was absolutely rattling with nerves. And my biggest fear, as I say, was that Scales wasn't going to be able to weigh me. For the leader to turn around, Jean Kelly, she's brilliant. For her to turn around and say, I'm sorry, um, we can't get a reading on this, I would have been mort. Did you have any idea what Scales was, was actually going to read? When, when had been the last time that you'd stood in the Scales before you went that night? Um, years? Years. Long before I gave up cigarettes. I know we don't want to focus on the weight. Yeah, yeah. Was it actually just, uh, just uh, talking in general, was it better or worse than, than your, your worst fear? Um, I actually thought it might have been a bit worse weight-wise. I thought it would have mm. been a bit heavier than what I was. But I, I think I had built myself up to being way off the Richter scale. As such. So you, you got even just so, a little bit of hope out of that, did you? A little bit of hope. Now, I also noticed in the notes, very interesting, <clears throat> because people, you know, people are very glib when, when and it's amazing, they, they would only talk to people who are overweight like this, they wouldn't talk to anybody else like this. It's a bit, oh, yeah, eat a bit less and move around a bit more, get a bit of exercise, you'll be grand and all the rest of it. You physically couldn't exercise for a couple of months, could you? No. You were saying to me you couldn't have moved from where you are to where Mark is without getting out of breath, which is just a few steps. Yeah. I had a wheels, uh, stool in the kitchen with wheels on it and I could walk a few steps and get pains and aches in my back and my hips and everything and I'd have to use it to get across the floor. The other thing I want to ask you, what about the strain, uh, what about the physical strain on you? Because we tend to forget that if somebody is that heavy, they're lifting that much weight. And I mean, you are not a big woman, you're quite petite. Uh, and obviously you hadn't been getting exercise, so therefore f physically it must have been an incredible burden on you. I mean, what about knee joints and hips and stuff like that? Pains from head to toe. Absolutely. And have you had th those checked out in terms of, did you do any lasting damage um, to them? Well, I have degeneration of the bones, all right. But I mean, that's... I live with that. <laughs> See, <laughs> as long as I live longer, I don't care. It's amazing that, that your first bit of exercise, when you actually, when, when you got to the point where you, you felt you were ready for it, your first exercise was what? From the front door to the back door. From the front door well, to the back door. door to the back door. And then I eventually went around the perimeter of the house. And now what's your... I, I built that up to about, I think it was 15, 15 times around the house. And then my first road trip, as I call it, I think was one and a half kilometres, which isn't a lot. But to me... Well, it, it is was, when you can't walk a few steps. Yeah. yeah. But I can walk 10 to 14k now. Check you out. And there's I've a, done Spink a, and everything in Glendalough. Well done. There's a woman yeah. that you uh, you probably want to give on a mention to. There was a, because you wanted somebody to go with you, a friend. And yeah. there was a, a woman, was it in the class? There was a girl, Fiona Doyle, yeah. And, um, what did she do? She helped me. She came walking with me. We walked very hard. And it took us forever to get up to the top. But she, but she got there. She went at my pace. <laughs> And um, and you discovered actually that she was doing it after she'd done her own. She'd go for her walk then after she'd come she come with me. Isn't that lovely? And I didn't discover it for a while after. That's a really good message from your story actually, is to buddy up, is to get someone oh, to help yeah. you. Because to try and do it on your own is tough. It's, it's an amazing achievement anyway, but to do it all on your own is a huge oh, ask. Definitely so is. to have someone else, to go to that Unison class with someone else is a great message to send to people. Definitely. And the Unison class in itself, they're, they're absolutely brilliant. It's like a big family. And I know I'm at target weight now, but I won't stop going to Unison by no means. Because the crack is 90 in the class. <laughs> well, that's the other thing I was going to say to you. When you get to, to approaching middle age and middle age, it, you, you don't make new friends. You kind of, you have your, your circle and yeah. others. So you can actually make a new lifelong oh, friend. definitely. Which is, a, which is a gift. I have loads of friends in Unislam. Yeah. And even on, on the chat room, um, I have friends all over the country that I have never actually met. And I can't wait till the Unislam of the year for to, to meet them because it's in um, Crow Park on the 18th. And I can't wait to meet. There's people that I'm texting constantly that and I have never met. Claire, what do your family make of this transformation? They're over the moon. Absolutely over my moon. And now you're running around with the grandkids? Yeah, big time. <laughs> they have me running around. And that's what it was all about? So that's it, yes. What Definitely. about going shopping for clothes? 
It's my new love. I was going to say I that. Love <laughs> And it's actually, we were in um, Pamela Scott's the other day, they sponsored me for the Unislimmer of the Year. And um, I was fitting on clothes. I was like, is that really me in that mirror? Because I, I actually looked so slender and it wasn't an image that I was looking at for a long time. Mm. Well, you were looking, ever. you were looking fabulous. Have you been back to the GP, by the way? I was back a few weeks ago. And? And um, she was actually, she had, she had been out on maternity leave and she hadn't seen me since last June. Did she recognise you? And she did recognise me and threw her arms around me and couldn't get over the fact Aww. that I had done so well. You and have cholesterol done. level, all that sort of stuff cholesterol is Cholesterol is normal. The only tablets wow. I'm on is for cholesterol, but that's because it's hereditary. I is hope it? you're proud of your achievement. I am chuffed. I can see you are. Chuffed. I'm thrilled that you are. It's an amazing story of just sheer determination. Thank you. Well done. Well, we Thank didn't you recognise you when you were walking across the floor. <laughs> no, we didn't. We were kind of going, no, that couldn't be, you know. So Thank you. That's extraordinary. And I know that lots of people will be watching and not only be inspired by this, but, you know, take heart from your story to keep on trying. Oh, yeah. definitely keep trying. It's worth the try. It's worth we only get one chance at life. Now, my mother, unfortunately, she didn't get any chances. The one thing took her. I got a chance. The doctor gave me that chance. And take the bull by the horns, grab it with both hands. Well said. Thrill feel. Thrill feel. Thank you so much. Not at all. Thank you. Uh, we'll take the news now. Here's uh, Siobhan Bastable.